This is a typical Berkeley question, getting right to the activism here. Uh, what do you think are the strongest two acts uh, people can take to neutralize the power of the 0.1 upper uh, con controlling uh, crew? What do you think, John? Is it too late? Can we seize back the power? Yes, it's never too late. It's, it's never too late. And, you know, if you, you, you just have to trawl back through the last couple of hundred years of history to, to points where people have asked themselves that. I mean, go back to Europe around 1848 when a lot of uh, mass movements appeared to be running into the sound into the sand, that they weren't really drawing the conclusions they wanted to. Uh, but the development of freedoms and of democracy since then, go up against power movements, has gone forward. We face a freshly, powerfully insidious enemy these days. But I think, first of all, we've got to start getting rid of the myths. Uh, and that really hasn't happened yet. Um, for example, you know, a lot of people thought the, thought the myth of Barack Obama. Um, that was always a myth. Barack Obama has more than any other president prosecuted sort of truth um, George Bush actually prosecuted one. Barack Obama more than any president history. And yet Obama had such liberal support, or less support perhaps, in, in 2008. So we, we still, we go through a bit, I feel, of demystification uh, before we can really identify um, just who are the enemy and what we can do about them. But the thing we think on that to never forget is that they are frightened of us. They are always frightened of us. Why does the Pentagon spend something like five billion dollars as it's done over the last five years? Basically propaganda. It's not aimed at the Taliban or Somalian insurgents. It's aimed at people in the United States and other people in Western countries to persuade them, convince them. So, we have that power, have that power which is expressed by the, the threat, the, the perennial threat we pose for them. Now here's a, a, a question that takes us to London about what's going on now. Uh, the person writes, thank you, Mr. Pilger, for speaking truth to power. Would you please offer an analysis of the reaction of the UK and US regimes to the recent events in London, specifically in retaliation to curb the activities of the youth in using the social media? Uh, when to hear, uh, essentially, that's the, that's the question. You know what's going on there. Yeah. Well, you know, there are people in your audience, there are two of my oldest friends in your audience, Matt and Janine Heron, uh, who know about uh, uh, uprising, uh, knew about it in Mississippi, and knew about it elsewhere. Um, uh, riots are, are never uh, pretty, uh, they're often brutal, and very often good people, the wrong people, are harmed. Uh, that certainly happened in London. Um, but there's no difference in essence in the in what's happened in London and Birmingham and all the other English cities to what happened in back in the sixties in Watts and in Detroit and, uh, and what has happened to some degree in other parts of the world today, in the Arab countries, for example, uh, it is about disconnection and disaffection. Uh, it's, it's many, many contradictions, but there is a real club connection, clearly, to 
what is important in life. There is a place for men, but of course, that many, if not most of the of protesters and rioters are young blacks, but not all of them, certainly. It is about the media, which are now uh, attempting to rob back any idea of an uprising, um, and, and uh, bringing that uh, famous Alpex uh, uh, quotation, which I paraphrase, that and always we're careful, but I'll have us hating the oppressed and loving the oppressors. That's the campaign at the moment, but trying to say that one of the protesters, the school club people, university students, people didn't have uh, any problem with poverty. Uh, yes, there are other but that's basically these are people who left out and, and as Britain has, uh, since the day of the last three decades, just in the end of the day, uh, Thatcher started it, has seen great social vision since records were, since before uh, There's going to be reaction, and this is the reaction in the streets. Uh, it's been brutally dealt with, but things are not going to be the same again. That's the Whether we're here, I'm not really sure. When you look all over the world, if you stand back without closing your eyes to the people being harmed, who should have been harmed, I think we, the people, are not in this more.